Hello there everybody, Sam Strange here, welcome back to the railway and welcome to another diesel review. So I must get asked loads of times every single week even, will you do another diesel review? And finally, yes, I'm going to be doing one. And it's not just a diesel shunter like I sometimes do, and it's not just a DMU, it's actually a proper fully fledged huge British diesel. And the diesel I'm going to be showing today is this. Now, obviously, it's just a Helgen box. It's pretty non-specific, isn't it, from the outside? But this is a Class 52 or Western, as they're also known. Now, a lot of people, when they see the Helgen packaging, especially if you've watched my channel, might shudder a little bit after that uh, Helgen tango. However, in my experience at least, it seems that Helgen are at least a lot better at uh, producing diesels than they are steam locos, so this ought to be pretty good. Now, I found this at a train fair. One of the sellers was selling this for £85, I think. Uh, he said it wasn't brand new, it had been run, but it had been run very, very little, and so it was in as new condition. And I think, as I say, he was asking £85, and I think I made him an offer for £80, which he accepted, so I don't think that's too bad for uh, a loco that's basically more or less brand new. So, I'm going to get this out today. I really hope you enjoy it. Diesel fans, this this one's for you. I'm sorry that I haven't been doing as many diesel reviews as maybe you'd like, but uh, let's make up for it today with a Class 52. I know a lot of people like these. So let's get started and let's see what this is like. So yes, the Helgen packaging, it's always a bit confusing to me, the Helgen packaging, because obviously, first of all, you can't see what's inside without looking at the end of the box. And also, um, you know, in model shops and things, people tend to open the box in order to display the model because there's no other way of actually seeing it. And of course, that makes it look like it's been used, you know, if the box is open. So yeah, I mean, obviously, I suppose it's quite cheap to use a box like this because they can use the same standard packaging for all their engines. But I do think it would be better to have an image on the front or even a window so that you can see the model. But clearly, Clearly, that's not a huge criticism. It just uh, makes the buying of these Helgen models a little bit uh, less exciting. And of course, for Helgen, the buying part is the most important part. Anyway, so yeah, there's nothing to see on the box at all, really, apart from uh, the sticker that's on the end of the box. So I will just show you that. So this is a Class 52, as you can see. It's item number 5220. It's D1073, which I think is the running number, and it's Western Bulwark. And somebody's written an S on there. I don't really know what that means. But as I say, this wasn't brand new, so uh, there has been somebody else owned this before I have. So anyway, let's get this packaging open then and I will show you this. And I must say, despite the packaging not really showing you much of the model, it is very, very good packaging. Helgen always tend to have the the best packaging really of, uh, of any manufacturer. So you've got this foam sort of shield which completely protects the loco and you can just about see the loco inside there. So as you can see, yeah, this is what the uh, train fare seller put on there. It does say £85 DCC ready, uh, but as I say, I made him an offer for £80 which he took. So I was quite pleased with that. I thought that was a good, decent bargain. So let's get this out then. And I must say it weighs an absolute ton. It really does weigh an awful lot. Now, I'm not 100% sure whether I got any paperwork with this. I suppose I could deconstruct the rest of the box just to check. But no, it looks as though I didn't get any instructions, which is fair enough. I mean, I suppose if you want to take the thing apart, it means a little bit more guesswork. But I'm pretty sure if you bought one of these new, you would uh, you'd get paperwork, wouldn't you? But yeah, there it is. And as I say, it weighs an awful lot, as Helgen Locos always tend to, really. Okay, so let's slide this out then, and I will show you the first really cool thing about this. Uh, well, maybe it's cool, maybe it's not. Uh, it's up to you. Just look at the amount of detail in these detail bags. Now, to an extent, some of this means that you can sort of customize your model in any way you like, but doesn't the sheer amount of detail here just show how much you've got to fit yourself? And these models are not cheap, by the way. Uh, but either way, no, there's some good stuff in there. There's some good optional extras, for example. I can see you've got some close couplings included inside there. I see that there are some uh, etched parts as well, etched metal parts. Uh, I don't know if there are any etched nameplates in there, which is a bit of a shame, but you can see there is a, a metal sprue there with some uh, etchings that you can take off. Uh, so so yeah, all sorts in there. It's anybody's guess what all of that is. All sorts of different sprues. Uh, but yeah, I mean, there's a lot there, isn't there? So I suppose that's not too much of a bad thing, but there's an awful lot of work to do if you decide you wanted to uh, fit all of that or any of it, really. Okay, so shall we take a look at this then? As you can probably tell already, this is in a beautiful BR Blue livery, which uh, I really do like. With the yellow ends, of course, it really does look splendid. Okay, so let's take this out. Now, 
yeah, it weighs an absolute ton. It is basically quite plasticky on the outside. There's very little metal work, which is, I suppose, quite normal for a diesel. Uh, but inside, there's clearly a lot of metal uh, because uh, it weighs an awful lot. Now, there is a bit of a problem immediately with this, and it really comes from the fact that the chassis is so heavy. And the problem is that the bodywork is not screwed to the chassis in any way. It's just clipped on, and you'd think, all right, well, they must have had some really good clipping mechanism then to make sure it's secure, but it's not. And in fact, if you hold it by the body, the body comes straight off, which is bad. As we know, you're never supposed to hold the loco by its wheels, you're always supposed to hold it with the body. And yeah, the uh, the body clips are absolutely naff, they really are rubbish, and so the body doesn't stay on properly, and uh, you have to be careful of that. Now obviously, yeah, this is second hand, so I don't know what the previous owner did with this, so it could have been due to the previous owner. However, you can't deny if the body was screwed on, it wouldn't be a problem in the first place. And in fact, I was taking a look on Hatton's at some of the second-hand ones on there too, and there's more than one. In fact, there's several of them which say the body's loose. So it is a problem with these. And once again, with such an expensive model, it's ridiculous that the body would not be secured to the chassis securely because when I first got this I very nearly had an accident it nearly dropped out onto the ground and with the chassis being so heavy it would have busted it I'm sure and uh, yeah in general that's the case with the model really it looks absolutely fantastic but the quality is a bit questionable I mean every part of it seems to shift in the hands this uh, whole lower section is just loosely clipped on and it moves when you hold it and a lot of Helgen locos I've had have been a bit like that on the quality front uh, so it's worth bearing in mind but as you can see at least visually this thing is absolutely beautiful so here we go then with a little bit of information on the uh, the westerns or the class 52s and after that i will show you a good close look at this thing okay let's get to it so the Class 52s were first introduced to the western region of British Railways, as you can probably guess, in 1961. Now these large diesel hydraulic locomotives were intended for both passenger and goods work, and they boasted a top speed of 90 miles per hour under load, and they had a power output of 1,350 brake horsepower. 74 examples were produced in total between 1961 and 1964, but some of them would survive for less than 10 years since the withdrawal of the class took place between 1973 and 1977, due to them being unable to compete with newer class 47s and class 50s, for example. Although seven westerns have been preserved, I believe, which is quite a good healthy number for a class that was withdrawn quite some years ago now. All right, so there she is then, the Class 52 Western up against the white background. And yes, it really is an exquisite looking model, this. It looks absolutely amazing. But as I said, straight out of the box, it is the quality that lets this thing down because it just drops to pieces. The body comes off, the underframe's too loose. So the quality is the biggest letdown with this, really. And the reason is, having had a closer look, they haven't used any screws. The whole thing is just clipped together. There's no part, inside or out, as far as I can tell, that uses screws. There may be some screws inside that I've not seen, but I have had the body off, and even the printed circuit board on the inside is held in with rubber grips. There's nothing screwed on, as far as I can tell. Now, I'm sure that's great, you know, I'm sure that makes it super cheap to produce, super easy to assemble, but the problem is if it's going to drop apart then it's a bad idea, no matter how cheap it is to assemble. And if this thing was being sold super cheap then it would be okay, but Helgen don't sell their models cheaply. In fact I had to pay £80 for this second hand, goodness only knows how much these would have cost brand new. But the point is, with prices like that there's no reason why they can't use screws to hold them together rather than just having things clipped together. And obviously the thing with screws is they can't come apart accidentally, you have to purposely unscrew them to take them out, which is a lot better than having things drop apart on you uh, accidentally and I've demonstrated this within seconds of this model being out of the box that the thing dropping apart is a massive issue so yeah Helgen sort out your quality seriously this is not the first model that has had major issues straight out of the box however I must say there are no small details dropping off this one which is very very good uh, so as you can see the paintwork is just fantastic on this we'll start with that shall we so you've got the western bulwark nameplate there now I haven't had the detail bags apart so I can't say this for sure but I didn't see any etched nameplates inside there so it looks as though this painted one is uh, what you're stuck with however it does look very very good that's done to a high standard and there is a lot of paintwork on this model especially on the underframe here you can see there's been a lot picked out there and also on the sides of each cab you've got the uh, the running number there there's also some printed signage underneath there which I can't quite make out with the naked eye but uh, I'm sure the camera close-up will do a bit of a better job of uh, showing that and then you've also got the uh, BR logo on the side there which looks pretty good and uh, there are some tiny little painted details as well such as these uh, warning signs just next to the doors which is done very very well and of course each end of the model has been picked out in the yellow as well uh, which I know some people aren't that keen on but I must say I really do like it and you can see really looking at the ends just
just how much metal work there is in terms of the handrails and things. So yes, all of these handrails are made of metal. And the same goes for the handrails used next to the doors as well. You can see that those are made of metal and they just look a lot better for it, especially on a pristine model. It really does look great, doesn't it? So the buffers on this model, while they are quite clearly made of plastic, they are sprung, which is pretty good, I think. So, yep, yeah, that's a good mark, isn't it? I mean, I'm glad they didn't skimp out on the sprung buffers. So, yeah, that's pretty cool. A nice mark of realism there. You can also see that none of the buffer beam detail has been added in the factory. Now, to start with, you might think, oh, well, that's a little bit lazy. Why couldn't they have done that for you? But actually, to me, I'm quite pleased to see that that hasn't been fitted because in the past with some Helgen Locos, the detail has been such on these buffer beams that the when you fit the coupling and try and couple coaches or rolling stock to it of any kind, uh, it just fouls it up and it won't work properly. So at least this way, you can put a coupling in and it will work properly and then you can fit the detail that you want to fit if it's not going to interfere with things. So overall, I think that should have brought the cost down because obviously it's a little less to do in the factory. But I think, yeah, I think that's a good idea because it just means that the thing will run properly out of the box and you don't want to have to start snipping details off just because they're fouling up the couplings and things on curves. So overall, not too bad that. The top of the model is very well detailed as well. The uh, the fans and grills and things look pretty good. They're not actual real grills. You can't actually see down inside the loco or anything like that, which I suppose some models do better, but they at least do look reasonably realistic. And there is an awful lot of molded detail up on the roof there. Now the cabs themselves, unfortunately are quite basic. There's certainly no painted detail inside there. There is a little bit of molded detail on the controls and things, but really nothing major to shout about. There's certainly no uh, crew members or anything like that, which is a little bit of a shame. Uh, obviously more modern diesels do have much better cabs than that but they're not too bad and uh, we'll see if that's particularly noticeable while it's running and of course we do have glazed windows throughout the model which I know sort of goes without saying but it's worth pointing out I think. Now the classic feature of the Class 52 Westerns is of course the bogies and the wheels which have been represented really really nicely. If you do look very, very closely at the wheels, though, you can see they are a little bit clumsily made. The plastic fill on the inside of the tyres is sort of spilling out onto the tyres. It just looks a little bit messy. And also the axles haven't been blanked out or anything like that, uh, which is a little bit visible. I don't really know what the real thing would have looked like in terms of that. I'll have to check. I've, in fact, I'll put a picture up if I can find one of the axles in real life and you can compare them if you like. But no, the underframe detail is relatively good. These pieces you can see here are actually separately fitted. Once again, they just clip on and off if you want to access the wheel set. But as you can see, yeah, a reasonable amount of detail there. Unfortunately, there is quite a gap between the underframe and the body, and that's again because it's, it's not screwed on. This whole underframe is just clipped on, and I showed you earlier on how it just drops off if you put too much uh, pressure onto it. Uh, so yeah, not very well held together. Again, the way to get around that is to use screws, I guess, to hold it together securely. It sounds obvious, doesn't it? I mean, what reputable manufacturer doesn't use screws? Uh, but uh, yeah, obviously it does need to be said because uh, this model does suffer for it. However, the thing looks absolutely beautiful and I, I think it's even down to the shade of blue, which just makes this look really, really astonishing. So yeah, uh, overall I do like this, but obviously you've just got to be careful handling this because it will drop apart on you if you're not careful. Okay, so let's get this down onto the track then. I can't wait to see what this looks like. I think we'll get it hooked up to a passenger train just to do it justice really. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about performance and see how it goes. So there she is then, the Western Bulwark down onto the track, and whether or not you like these, I think you'll struggle to deny that this thing is really, really cool looking. And so yeah, issues aside, I must say I do like this thing overall. It really does look the part, doesn't it? Okay, so assuming she runs all right, I have set up a rake of five Pullman coaches, and you can see those are waiting just behind the loco there. And I have fitted the coupling already to the back. The couplings don't come fitted, uh, but they do come in the detail bag, so you can fit those if you like. I have noticed though that the coupling, even the coupling, is quite flimsy. It's a little bit too easy to pull it back out again, and I will do a demonstration to show that a little bit later on. But for now then, let's talk about performance. Now, the mechanism isn't too bad, but it's not that great either. Now, is it all-wheel drive? Sadly not. Is it all-wheel pickup? Sadly not. Uh, but it's not too bad. At least both bogies are driven, which is good, but the centre axles on both bogies don't pick up and they aren't driven. So that's not too bad. Um, what's that? So we've got four of the six axles driven and picking up, so that isn't too bad. And there is quite a lot of pulling power, admittedly. I think I measured about one Newton, and I'm going to start measuring the pulling force of these things now. So uh, hopefully that'll be interesting when we get a few more values to start comparing. Uh, the mechanism itself isn't too bad. There is a very, very strong motor in the centre of the model, which I believe might be a five pole. Either way, it's very 
very, very powerful. And there are massive flywheels on that as well, which uh, keep the loco running actually way after you cut the power. The actual bogies themselves though are quite basic. They're all done in plastic. The chassis of the bogies are just plastic and the wheels just sit straight into that plastic with no proper bearings or anything like that. It's not too bad though, because obviously plastic isn't going to wear the axles as much as a metal chassis would. Um, but yeah, they are quite cheaply made, I think, but that doesn't seem to affect the performance too much. Okay, so let's do a little bit of slow speed testing then and see how this goes. So I'm just turning the controller up very, very slowly and we'll see if we can get a crawl out of this. It's buzzing. It's just starting to inch backwards. And as you can see, it just kicks in. So the answer is no, unfortunately, this cannot crawl. That's more or less as slow as it can go. Now, my theory for that is that the flywheels are so big and <laughs> so heavy that they do eat into the torque of the motor a little bit, which is a, a little bit of a shame. It does give the loco a lot of power, I suppose, but it has definitely curtailed its ability to do a good slow speed which is a bit of a shame, but it isn't too bad, as you can see. And it is good and smooth. I have also noticed that it makes quite a lot of noise on curves and things, as though things are sort of catching on the body. I'm not too sure what's going on there. Uh, there's nothing that can be done, though, because it's all sort of clipped together as it's supposed to be, so I'm not sure what's going on. But uh, either way, let me go and couple to the Pullman coaches, and I'll show you what I meant about the coupling being a bit too easy to pull out. There we go. So nice gentle coupling there, or as gentle as I could. So let me show you this then. So even if you accelerate the locomotive too heavily, it can pull the coupling out. Are you ready for this? Make sure I've got it the right way. Ready? See that? <laughs> and there's only five coaches there. So even your acceleration has to be careful because uh, the coupling will pull out. So it seems that the flimsiness really is ingrained into every feature of the model, which is a shame. As I say, I think it is the quality that lets it down the most, but it does look great when it's running. So I'm gonna refit these couplings and we'll get it started and we'll see how it looks with them. There we go. So that seemed to work a lot better. Okay, let me show you what else is on the line then. So on the middle line, we have yet another Class 52 Western, but this is a much older Lima model, but it is in quite an interesting livery. It's in that sort of desert sand livery. Uh, now, quite interestingly, this model does have a rubber traction tire. So you might think this is more powerful than the Helgen, but it's actually not. It's actually considerably weaker. In fact, the pulling power of this was uh, only 0.4 Newtons. So that's less than half the power of the uh, Helgen Western. So let's get that started then. As you can see though, it's still got a decent rake of uh, wagons, some of them with stones in. So there's an awful lot of weight there really. Speed that up a little bit more. And then on the inside line, I've got yet another Western region diesel. Let me bring this in. So this is a Backman warship, as you can see, and it's got some sort of X great Western coaches behind there. Now the pulling power of this might surprise you as well, because it's still considerably less than the, uh, the Helgen. So the pulling power of this is only 0.6 Newtons or the pulling force, I should say. So it's still considerably less than the Helgen. So even though the Helgen 52 is quite poorly made, in my opinion, it sure is powerful. So if that's something you look for in a model, then uh, it might be worth considering just for that. Now there are lights on this model, but curiously, slash annoyingly, they've only used bulbs and not LEDs. So they're so dull and so dim that you can't actually see them. Which is a shame, I don't know why they wouldn't use LEDs, because also bulbs get a lot brighter when you run the loco faster, whereas LEDs are not so much like that. So yeah, it does have lights, but unfortunately you can't see them. I'll try and show you a, a bit of a shot from the front so that you can see that. So yes, the lights are actually on there, and I've confirmed that by removing the body to check. But as you can see, there's uh, no indication that there are working lights on this because they're bulbs and not LEDs. So again, strange design choice. Don't know why they would do that. But uh, I suppose the fact that it's got lights is a good fact. You know, it's better than no lights at all. But what's the point if you can't see them? Mm. Not absolutely sure. So I think it's quite clear that the biggest letdown on this is the quality. And it's quite interesting really, because I suppose really you can get away with it with diesels because say compared with steamers, diesels are quite simple, aren't they? I mean, there are parts of them that are quite complex really, but there's not a massive amount of pipe work, for example. There's no working running gear that has to work. Generally speaking, the paintwork is a lot more basic on diesels as well. 
So I wonder whether you can get away with a little bit more on diesels where quality is concerned. So I wonder if that's why the Heldron Tango came across so bad, because while you might get away with things like that on diesels, it doesn't work like that with steamers and it shows. So yeah, I wonder if that's the thing, but with diesels, it seems okay. I mean, this one's probably one of the worst I've had in terms of quality from Heldron, but with others, it's been just fine, more or less. Okay, so here are some of my ratings then for the very lovely looking Helgen Class 52. So the detail, I've given it a four star. I think the detail was actually very, very good. The paintwork was really nicely applied and the actual separately fitted and slash, I guess, molded detail too is very, very good too. I also like the use of metal on handrails and such. I think that really makes it realistic. I didn't give it five star because the cab was quite simple and there's sort of no detailing behind the grills and the fans and such. And I think I would save the fifth star for those locos that do have the fully painted cabs and that sort of thing. However, the detail was pretty good. So performance then, I've given this four stars. The pulling power itself is very, very good. It's got an awful lot of power. However, it just misses out on the five star because it can't do those slow speeds. And also because it's a tad noisy around curves and things. It has a bit of an unhealthy uh, roar when it goes around curves. I can only assume something's catching on the inside. Uh, but yeah, overall the performance is very, very good. The mechanism then, I've also given it a four star. Yes, it's pretty good. It's got huge flywheels, a really nice, uh, powerful motor. But of course, again, it's not perfect because it's not all wheel drive and it's not all wheel pickup. And the, uh, the chassis of the bogies themselves is quite basic and it is only made in plastic, which isn't all that great really. But uh, overall, yeah, the mechanism is quite good. Quality though is where the model really falls down. It's very flimsily assembled, unfortunately. Everything drops off it, given the chance. The couplings, the body, the underframe. They ought to have used screws, frankly. There's no excuse for them not to. And uh, even if they thought it was a good idea, the fact that it dropped to pieces within seconds of me getting it out of the box proves otherwise. So yeah, quality is a bit of a shame about that, but otherwise it's not too bad. Now value then is a bit tricky because unfortunately I can't find any of these for sale brand new so I don't really know what the RRP would have been or the sale price. However, going by my second hand price of about £80, I don't think it's too bad. I think the quality ought to have been better but the level of detail and the performance for that money doesn't seem too bad I don't think. So I'm giving it a 4 star there. Overall then that is 7.25 out of 10, there we go, let's put it into the ranking. There we are, 14th, just above the Great Western Freight Pack by Hornby and just below the Backman USA Dock Tank. Overall though, I think I am quite pleased with this. I think the second hand price was reasonable for what it was. So yeah, there are issues with it, but overall I don't think I got a bad price, did I? And it does look great, as I keep saying, it looks absolutely fantastic on the layout. So let me know what you think then in the poll. Is this a loco for you? or are the downsides a little bit too much for you? Do let me know, it'd be interesting to find out what you think. I must say though, I have enjoyed running a diesel for a change, or reviewing a diesel for a change really. Um, some people might think I don't like them, but actually I do quite enjoy diesels from time to time. I think I would admit that I prefer steam. But yeah, that's not to say I don't like diesels, and I do have a couple more still to review. So yeah, drop a like on the video if you want to see more diesels, and I'll see what else I've got. Alright then folks, well that will just about do it for today's review. As I say, I hope you enjoyed seeing a diesel for a change, and if you're one of those that isn't a fan of diesels, I do apologise, but I promise to do something steam related next time for you. There we go, how about that? Anyway folks, once again, thank you for your company, thank you for watching, uh, do let me know down in the comments what you thought, of course, and uh, for now I will see you very, very soon. Alright, cheers everybody.